So this is one of those days where I didn't have a big plan. Didn't have to do a lot on the farm. It was kind of nasty out. It was kind of hot, humid. So I came into the garage and spent a little bit of quality garage time. Didn't have a specific job to do, so I just started rummaging through the saws. One of the things that Bob's wanted to do for a while is, is more of the... Uh, old John Thread series, the 630, 670, 625 series, and uh, making some of those. So I figured I was going to build one of those. I had some parts around. This is a John Thread 670 set of cases. Um, you can take a look right there. Maybe you can see it. And I'd already converted this one over to a Husqvarna set of controls and had put on this aftermarket 268 open port. You can see how the has the finger ports in there. That's an open port cylinder. I'd put this cylinder on. You know it ran. It didn't run well, but it ran good enough to cut wood. Um, Nothing wrong with it, I suppose. It's just boring. So, pulled it off. Thought about putting on a closed port. You see it right there? That's a closed port 268 top end. Um, it's salvageable. I have a better piston than that. I can put it in there, I suppose. And as I was rummaging through the parts, I ran into this box right here. Another one of the famous aftermarket companies where huh, the cylinders are from some mystery place that you have no idea where they come from. Might come from uh, one company one week and another company the other. But in this particular case, this is the top end that was in that box. It's a closed port, uh, 272 style top end. Doesn't look that bad. If you look down in there where the squish band is, that cer certainly could be better. That's why people cut the base and trim the squish band to get rid of that kind of problem in there. But, you know, for what I want to do, it'll be fine. I don't know if you hear those birds, they're hungry and they're protesting. And unfortunately, I can't feed them. What I want to do today is just show a quick and dirty way of checking squish. You hear about it all the time. That's the distance between the piston crown, your top dead center, and the squish band on your cylinder. How do you measure that? The uh, online logic, the conventional logic says you want to have around 20 thousandths. You can, get do, you can do a little less and you can do a little more, but 20 thousandths is a good number. Sometimes stock you see them as much as 40 and 50 thousandths. The downside of that is loss of compression, a little bit less power, but the damn thing will run fine. It just won't run as good as it could. You get a little bit too tight, you get down in the 15 thousandths range or below at high RPMs, uh, that piston can go up there and slap the top of your cylinder. Of course, if you get too tight, it just hits it, period. Because there is a little bit of stretch when the, when the RPMs go up. So 20 thousandths for the hobbyist is a good number, but how do you check that? Well, that's what we're going to do right now. What I'll do is before I do any real work on the saw, before I put it together, and I want to try a concept like this, or actually, no matter what I do, if I'm building a top end, I'll do this anyway, just to find out what I have. Is I'll put the piston on the connecting rod without the rings. Set the cylinder right on top of that. Take a couple of the uh, cylinder bolts that hold this thing together. Get them in there. 
And a lot of times you can get away with two, but you really ought to put all four in. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to put in the two. Get that cylinder on there with that piston in there. And get those bolts where they're firm. You don't have to really crank them, but just make sure they're firm. And then you take solder, like this, this soft solder. Clip off the end. Look in your exhaust and get that piston so it's pretty close to being top dead center. You take that piece of solder, go right to the front where you feel it hit the wall. roll it through and what happens is you know if you're you shouldn't have to push too hard I didn't but what will happen is that piston will smash that solder that soft solder and if you got to push too hard that means you don't have enough squish to begin with so you just you stop at that point in time but I was able to do it with my fingers if you can't do it with your fingers don't continue don't force it but I was able to get it to roll over and with this particular cylinder, I'm getting 22,000 squish on the exhaust side. The smart thing to do is to do more than just one point. You know, go around and hit a couple of the different uh, points in that cylinder to make sure, number one, you don't have a erroneous reading, but number two, that you don't have a casting anomaly in that piston. See again, I was able to do it with my two fingers. Turn it over. Like I said, if it doesn't just turn over with a little bit of effort with two fingers, stop. Don't go any further. So on the back side, I still got the same 22 thousandths squish. But hopefully, now you know how to check the squish. Something you hear about all the time and something I get asked about all the time. So anyway, talk to you later. Bye for now. I guess while I'm here, one of the things I like about this series saw, these uh, 200 series saws, is really how easy it is to put them together. Um, I, I just, I think they're awesome. Um, what I typically do is actually assemble the carburetor and intake manifold onto the cylinder before I set them onto the cases. You know, sometimes you gotta finagle that rubber dam right here a little bit at, down into here. But you know, just makes things a little easier for me. So, I guess, well, I got a video camera here. I might as well video some of this process. Again, the focus of the video was just simply a squish. It wasn't all this other stuff. But while we're here, what the heck. Um, gas sealers. Since it's hard to find my uh, beloved 1194, and I'm kind of at the end, I've been trying different sealers. One of these is a Permatex Moto Seal 1. They call it the ultimate gasket maker gray. Um, I'm building a couple of saws using that material. I want to see how it works as compared to my favorites. So I'm not recommending using this. I'm testing it. I still recommend 1194, Yama Bond, or one of those type sealers until something like this is proven to be worth, you know, endorsing this point in time it's just an experiment you know on these older saws having something like this actually makes sense because um, a lot of times it's very very hard to find gaskets for these things you know you can get them online I suppose I've seen some of the aftermarket suppliers sell gaskets 
uh, Hudsel, for example, sells them for 350s and 372s, but of course you can get them from the dealer too. The other thing I like about this series saw is, you know, they're a fairly effective design. Just gonna set that right there. I hear my wife yelling at her pet bull. You know, some people have dogs in their yard. Some people have bulls. Well, I don't know if anybody else has got bulls. But we've got a bull in our yard. Think about that for a second. Imagine the uh, delivery guy comes up unsuspecting, running up into the yard, and uh, encounters a black Angus bull for his greeting. Get those in there kind of firm, not too tight, because it's plastic. Always got to remember that. And again, I may have to futz around with this thing right here. I'm going to guess it's that one. Yeah, that's the right one. I like to just to have a little bit of oil on the inside. Some people don't like to do that, but I do. Not much. I'd put a little bit on that uh, wrist pin in there as well. All right. Let's see if I can get that cylinder to slide right on there. A thin film of stuff on this set of cases. You know, I, I definitely recommend checking Squish before you do anything relative to, you know, the top ends. Especially if you have aspirations of assembling without a base gasket or, or assembling somebody's hopped up trim cylinder. Check that squish before you put it together. You know? Save yourself a little bit of aggravation, I believe. Let's see if I can get some on this cylinder. Let it gel up a little bit. One thing I can tell you is this, is when I took that other cylinder off, the other aftermarket 268 cylinder I had put on there with 1194, I'll tell you what, it came off hard. It's so hard to break that seal. It's almost like a glue. That bond's really, really strong. That's why I recommended the 1194 for so many years. I just have very, very good luck with it. I hear the small tractor going. That means my wife is taking a load of water up to the cows and the horses on the, on the big hill, making me feel guilty because I should be doing that instead of playing with these freaking saws. Huh. Looks like it went down. Now, to get the rest of the stuff to settle in. There it goes. I really love those things. They are so easy to work on. You know, they are so easy to work on. That whole class of saw. 
261s, 266s, 268s, 272, all of them. They're just so easy to work on. So for a hobbyist, they're just a lot of fun. So anyway, let me finish getting that cylinder on. Again, I like flopping it up on its side to get the cylinder screws started, you know. And just like in all the other videos I've done, I put them in with a cross pattern and I tighten them with a cross pattern. And to those who have a sharp eye for Husqvarna John Thread stuff, we'll see that all is not usual in the carburetor area either. Because that's certainly not the carb arrangement that came with that saw. It doesn't have the John's Thread external pulse. It's got the Husqvarna pulse through the manifold deal. There's your pulse hole. Yeah, I don't know if you guys follow my videos, but this is the saw I had done, uh, oh my God, a year and a half ago now, and had converted from the John Thread to Husqvarna controls, so. Well, I guess the uh, answer to the question is it runs. Anyway, until later, I get a chance to test it. Bye for now.